All right, let's get right into this story. So, I went to college that was a few towns away from my city, and that college I graduated from 2018, May 2018. And so, it's been about almost two years since I've been out of college, but during my sophomore year of college, first semester, was when I met multiple different kinds of friends that I started hanging out with, right? I had I was in and out of different friend groups, had a lot of different friends. Uh, I distanced myself over time or like cut off or vice versa or whatever, uh, uh, different friends over time. But some friends I happen to be friends with at the moment um, was uh, one guy named Cody uh, and his girlfriend and a kid named Mark, right? So, uh, Cody's girlfriend is, uh, her name is Desiree. So, Cody didn't go to that college. Cody is homeless. Uh, but his girlfriend and Mark go to my college. They were the year below me. Um, and the reason why I kind of met them was because the girlfriend at the time I had, uh, happened to be like friends of friends with them, you know? So I would here and there hang out with like Cody and his girlfriend or Cody and his girlfriend and Mark. Uh, and during that semester, it was called the dark ages among my friends and I. The reason why it was called the Dark Ages is because a lot of bad stuff happened to all of us. Uh, for me in particular, um, stuff that happened was like I had a really bad relationship at the time. She was insane. That's a story for another time. Uh, and um, I used just the most drugs I've ever done in my life during that time. And uh, a lot of other bad stuff happened during that semester. So, what happened was, I'll, I'll give you, like, the whole story and synopsis of what occurred uh, with this friend, Cody. So, Cody was a nice, good kid. The reason why he was homeless, uh, he was about my age at the time, so I think he was 20. Uh, and I think I was almost 21. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, and he would like sleep over at the twenty the buildings that were open for 24 hours. Uh, so like he would sleep on the sofas there or whatever. Uh, or he would sleep um, at that girl's dorm, his uh, girlfriend at the time. Uh, that's how he was like kind of being able to survive. But it was getting closer and closer to winter. Uh, I met him like around October, I believe. Uh, but it was like over the months, it was getting colder, obviously, uh, especially in Massachusetts where it can get really cold. Um, that sucks for him. And uh, in the city we're at, there's no homeless housing, only like during the day. Uh, and same with all the towns surrounding. The town where we were at happens to be the one with the most services for homeless people. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so it was difficult for him. That was the first time he was ever homeless. Uh, and he wasn't homeless starting since like only like a few months before then. Uh, and he's from a town that's a number of towns away. I think he's from like Braintree. Uh, that's like a town that's a few towns uh, south of Boston. Um, so, or he's from Quincy. It's one of those two. But what happened was the reason why he was, he was homeless was because his parents kicked him out uh, because he and his stepdad did not get along at all and they got in a little tussle. Um, but it was because the stepdad was very disrespectful and abusive uh, towards him. So it sucks that a stepdad like that, an abusive stepdad like that can take over a household like that and ruin the offspring's life like that or and or make it harder so he was a cool nice kid 
but one thing I probably shouldn't have done uh, was um, I had a lot of like, I had too many excess drugs uh, on me. So I would share them a lot with friends or friends of friends or who kind of whoever I met at the time. So I would share like excess supplies with him uh, and his girlfriend and uh, Mark um, and whomever. Uh, And it would be like chill at experience. Uh, But at the same time, I shouldn't be providing that kind of stuff to them. But the only ones I provided like that I gave them to keep uh, of extra supplies would be mild legal drugs. I would only do at the time for the most part, I would try only to do legal, like ones that are that you're able to legally have, not prescription, but ones that you actually can legally have. Uh, that's usually what I would have and give away or whatever. Usually, not all the time. So, yeah. Uh, at the same time, it was like, I felt kind of nice in giving that, but also I would give random snacks and random food here and there to, uh, to Cody and, uh, his girlfriend, uh, just out of generosity or whatever. And certain other like free stuff that I just did not need. Like, uh, if I just didn't need an extra shirt or whatever. Um, but there was a point in time where he was banned from being on campus and that can happen uh that's happened to other friends uh that i have have or had uh that certain situations they did whether it be minor or major they got banned from campus so how cody got banned from campus was the campus police which are also state police uh Notice that he was sleeping on the sofa there uh, in one of the 24-hour open buildings. And from then on, they put a ban uh, that he's not allowed to be um, on ca- on the campus. So that just made his life harder because his girlfriend dormed on campus and wouldn't help provide a place to stay. And at that point, it was getting quite cold because it was like December and like snow was starting to come in. Uh, It was just like a bad situation. So he was getting really depressive and everything. Uh, And so one day, he, there's a footbridge uh, right near the um, campus. And typically, me, others, and whoever would go smoke whatever there, you know, Uh, me and friends would smoke legal drugs uh, or weed there uh, versus other people would smoke weed there or cigarettes or whatever and so that was like that kind of spot but this this kid uh cody one day he was feeling quite suicidal he was standing on that footbridge on the edge he was about to jump off the cots were called and they were there or whatever uh it was campus police who are state police and they were able to thankfully convince him to not do that. His life was saved by these police. So there ended up being an article about it in the paper. I don't think they provided his name, uh, but they did identify the couple police officers who saved his life. So I feel bad for him. God bless him. I hope he's in a better place now. I haven't talked to him for years, but... Thankfully, his life was saved. Um, And after then, there was a sign that was put on the footbridge just saying like like a suicide kind of hotline uh, um, ad. And yeah, there there were like multiple signs that were put there just providing that kind of information for suicidal people. Um, so it's good to give that kind of advocacy because, uh, whenever there's people that suicide or whatever, that, that's like, that's kind of a place they would kind of ponder is like, 
a footbridge that's above a highway, real high above a highway. They they would maybe like be tempted and or pondering on potentially ending it then and there, you know? So uh, thankfully he was saved and thankfully he was helped. And I hope that he got on a better, good path and things got better for him, hopefully. I, I, um, but that, that was my experience, uh, in friendship with him. Um, and yeah, so that was that story. Thank for you. Thank you for listening. Please check out my other stories, like, and subscribe. Bye-bye.